Alright, hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Sorry about the delay today. I was... <laughs> a couple things. First, I, I was working on a blank and I had to wait for a specific time and it was uh, being a little slow. So, um, anyway, so I got that blank done and then I tried to set up the stream and my computer like fell apart and I had to restart. So, I appreciate the, uh, the patience, but uh, anyway, so today what we're going to do, uh, I'm kind of working on this blank that requires a bunch of multiple pours. So today's stream is going to be kind of short. We're just going to be making uh, a red, white, and blue blank, or actually a couple of them, for Maker Central. So uh, basically just a color swirl blank. Uh, we're going to cast it in a PVC pipe. I got a couple of them uh, ready to rock here. So uh, we'll kind of go through and set up the, the molds the way that they need to be. Uh, and then we'll go through the, the pores. So like I said, kind of quick, but uh, still trying to, to make blanks for Maker Central. So uh, I know you guys are probably tired of me mentioning it, but uh, if anybody that's uh, joining us today doesn't know, Maker Central is starting, or I mean, it's happening uh, May 11th and 12th in, uh, let's see, at the NEC in Birmingham, England. So it's gonna be a really awesome event. Um, I'm gonna be doing demos at the Easywood Tools booth and uh, along with Carl Jacobson and Scott Grove and Jamie Page, I think, is going to turn some stuff there. Uh, I think Caitlin the Cat is going to be doing some demos there. So lots of people at the Easywood Tools booth. Uh, and I'm just making blanks so that uh, if anybody wants to turn any of my blanks, they have them. And obviously, I need some blanks for myself. Uh, so that kind of... Uh, whoa. Sorry, just looking at my the blank that I just poured. It's kind of smoking. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm working on a blank that I'm going to be turning. It's the peacock. <coughs> Excuse me. That uh, startled me. I'm going to actually show you guys what's going on with this blank real quick. <laughs> uh, I would have done this on the stream, but there were so many things going on and it was going to take so much time that uh, I actually just decided it'd be better to, to videotape it. So we're doing the, it's the peacock blank. <laughs> it's kind of maybe too much resin uh, for the liquid diamonds, so hopefully it, it works out. It's smoking though. I don't know. Can you guys see that? I mean, it's literally there's like smoke coming off of this blank. So maybe too much resin. Hmm. I'm going to turn the fan on because I don't think that resin smoke is really that awesome to be breathing or anything. So I got a fan over on the wall. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll be okay. I don't know. Anyway, um, so that blank requires multiple pores because I wanted to get the peacock feathers where they, where I wanted them in the middle. And I came up with a cool idea. So anyway, that's what I was working on that <laughs> delayed me. And that's going to be one of the blanks that I, I turn at Maker Central. So anyway, uh, let's move on. Alessandro from Italy. Nice. Welcome. Jeremy. Uh, you, you, you super chatted me because I finally showed up. Thanks, brother. Let's see here. Ohio, nice. I think my clock is slow. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, shoot, it's time to start. And anyway, let's see here. Nice. That's awesome, Ben. Oh, I, yeah, I, I, no problem, man. Smoking resin never, I know. <laughs> Hit it with the, inf yeah, actually, let's test it. I've been uh, using my infrared thing more on, more and more often. Uh, yeah, that's pretty high. 267. Probably too hot. 270. <laughs> uh, oh well. It happens. But it uh, so far, nothing is really going wrong with it necessarily. I don't know. The, maybe one of the problems was I poured that like right after the first, so it's like multiple layers. I don't know. So anyway, let's let's move on with uh, let's just just not look at that because there's nothing I can do about it at this point. Chad Schimmel is here. Oh man, we have been graced with Chad. How's it going, buddy? All right, so we're gonna move to the casting view. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I set up these these tubes. So I'm gonna be casting in these pipes. Um, and we're, all we're doing is just a, like a color swirl type thing. Um, I, I figured, I figured, why not make some red, white, and blue blanks? Uh, that's like the you know the the British flag, and it's also the the American flag colors, and so lots of lots of cool stuff. So I thought we'd just make that; it'd be kind of interesting. 
Um, let me get my iPad set up so that I can see what's going on in the chat. Uh, there we go. And so I, I've already made one batch of these, and that's what the thumbnail picture was on my channel. Um, so I kind of know what all the... I really need to come up with some better solution for this iPad thing. Come on. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Uh, well, yeah, I make mistakes sometimes. But, you know, this honestly may not be a big mistake. The problem is I'm used to using a Lumalite uh, clear slow set, and that would have not even... It wouldn't even have shuttered <laughs> that much. All right, so we got our pipes, and what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna hot glue them. This is the one of those shelves from the, the P-Town Subby um, mold rack thing. <clears throat> we're not actually gonna use that because these are too tall to actually fit in here, but it still makes it an easy, easy way to uh, mount your PVC pipes. Um, so we're gonna mount them with hot glue. Uh, this is the step where you don't wanna be shy with your hot glue. Um, put lots and lots of hot glue on there. Um, I've already sprayed the tubes with uh, stoner. So we're ready there. Just making sure I'm, okay. Just making sure I got everything right. So hopefully, yeah, you guys can see. So no big deal here, just uh, the thing is, you wanna make sure that you put enough glue on. You don't want the, these things leaking. Um, this is a really easy way to, to mount or, you know, like set up your, your pipes. However, if it leaks, you're totally screwed. So, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if you do these in tape or, you know, any other method. But uh, the thing that I like about this is it's pretty simple to demold and it also gives you a flat base. Uh, now, when I'm doing pen blanks, I usually just use the silicone plugs just because they're way faster than me messing around with a hot glue gun or, or any other you know, tape. Um, they're, they're pretty simple and it's not that much resin um, that you're pouring at once. The problem with the silicone plugs, and I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, in a second here. So this is what I use for, for you know, three quarter inch PVC pipes for pen blanks. The thing is, when you shove one of these guys in there, it, it creates a little weird lip. Uh, you know, there's like resin that's coming around because that's, that's kind of at an angle in there. So it just, it's not a dead flat thing, but for pen blanks, whatever, I'm gonna cut them anyway. Um, but for something like this, I don't really wanna have that weird extra, you know, waste of resin basically. Uh, so you get a flat base uh, on this and I, I just, I like that a lot better. So let's go with, let's see, did I do that right? Yeah. Start this one out now. I've already put one, one you know, blob of glue around the bottom, that's fine, but I'm gonna come back and actually give it two more lines, uh, one on the bottom and one on the top, just so that it doesn't leak at all. And I probably should have put that a little bit farther over, but that's okay. Need more glue. Um, like I said, it's, it's a good idea to, this is where you wanna waste the material. You know, hot glue doesn't really cost that much uh, compared to resin. Resin costs a lot, so you don't want it leaking and wasting resin and just blowing the pour, you know. You don't want it to, you don't have to redo it. So I slather these things with hot glue. I actually had one leak and it was like a six inch, or not a six inch, uh, like a four inch PVC pipe, I think. <laughs> Let me tell you, that really kind of sucked. So now I just slather the glue on. Usually only have to learn that lesson once. So hopefully you guys will just not even make that mistake. So again, I'm putting a line down on the bottom here. That way there's no leaks underneath. And then I'm also going to put one up kind of on the top of the pipe there. I, some of this stuff may not be totally necessary. It's probably not likely that it's gonna leak up there, but like I said, glue's cheap. 
So it just keeps on dumping snow up here. Um, I actually got a pretty wicked powder day on Tuesday up at Kirkwood. Um, and I really didn't know how that day was going to be because I wasn't sure how much snow they got really. And, and it turned out it was dumping snow the whole day. It was awesome. It was a really awesome day up there. April 2nd. One of the best days of the season. Powder. Uh, one of the cool things about that day also, so Kirkwood for me, Kirkwood's a little bit more advanced. It's a little bit of a more difficult hill, the terrain there. And so, uh, at, at the top anyway. Um, and there's this one lift that I've never gone on before. It's called the wall. And uh, it's like expert only double black diamond. And, you know, it's all kind of crazy warnings. But it's super steep. And it's just one of those things that I'm like, man... Just haven't had the cojones to go up there. And so it was a powder day. And I'm like, I'm going to check out the wall today. And uh, on a powder day, that is one heck of an area to go to. It was awesome. It's steep, but you kind of need steep when it's, uh, you know, 8 inches, 12 inches of powder. Okay, so we got our tubes ready. Let's stop and check the chat, see what you guys are chatting about. I'm going to unplug my hot glue gun. I need—I don't think I have a link to my hot glue gun on my website. Uh, for anybody that, if you're ever looking at like, oh, what, what material or what tool or what accessories are you using? I'm going to put a link in the chat here just to, to let you guys know. I'm gonna, but I'm, I'm also checking to see if I put that glue. I don't think I have this glue gun up there. I really like that one. It's a DeWalt. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's up here, but I have links to a ton of things, and I'm going to add that because it's a really, it's a good glue gun. So here's a link to my tools I use page on my website. Uh, let's see here. Who's here? Christina's here. How's it going? Okay, lots of people, lots of people. So how was, uh, how was the... Um, what should, what should I call it? Ooh, you're in Colorado. Yeah, we got, we're, we're still actually, it's supposed to sort of snow this week, I think. I don't know. It's hard to tell these storms. We weren't supposed to get that much on this last storm. We got a lot more than uh, they thought. Nice. How's it going, Mick? Down from Australia. That's sweet. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, how, how was the Southeast Pen Turners gathering, guys? I know Jeremy was there and Chad. Anybody else go to it? Wow, that hardened up really fast. <laughs> I'm looking at this resin. Uh, I think I'll let that cool off a little bit. Yeah, we got a couple of air bubbles down in the bottom. It, it was maybe a little too much resin. But two things were going on. I had already poured a layer, so it was maybe a little bit warm underneath, and then maybe a little bit too much resin on that pour on that layer. Um, what am I doing? I gotta get my little notebook. I'm gonna, I actually have, I already know how much I need on these and I, to, to figure out how much resin to pour in these things. Um, I just uh, figured out the radius and did the, you know, pi r squared. So these are two inch pipes. One, one squared is one times 3.14 times, uh, I think I was measuring about five inches let's see here where's my notes yeah i was going for about five inches tall this thing's six um and then you just multiply that by 0.554 which is the the thing on on Illumilite's website their little multiplier and then i just multiply it by 28 to 30 28.35 is the conversion to uh grams and so then that's how i figured out the number so hopefully you followed me on that. But um, So let me write down some notes real quick. Uh, I think I'll just put it on the intro cam so you can kind of... <laughs> there's the... This stuff's already hard. The first layer took like an hour and a half almost, or an hour and 20 minutes to, to, to solidify. It was, a, it was almost as much resin. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm shooting a video, so this video will be up this weekend on Sunday. So... I know you're like looking at my back, but at least it's better than just staring at a pipe. 
Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm writing down notes. Um, the date, April 5th, uh, what, kind of what we're doing, red, white, and blue. Uh, what mold? I'm using two inch PVC pipes. Um, let's see here. We're going to use Alumalite clear slow set for the resin. And those took, let's see here, I think they took about 250 grams each. I didn't write very good notes, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. So I'm going to mix up 500 grams total. That's 250 times two. And then we are going to, I'm just writing down, I'm breaking down uh, my ratios of how much of each color. And I'm just going to use pearl powders for all three of these. Uh, it just kind of makes things simple. One, one little tip uh, that I want to mention, uh, if you, oh, wrong camera. <laughs> uh, anybody that was here last week knows about camera mishaps. Uh, one thing I want to mention, the Alumalite white dye, so Alumalite brand dyes, the, the white, it's extremely heavy, like compared to most dyes and the powders and all that stuff. And uh, it really makes you have to wait until the, the resin thickens up, to, uh, otherwise it'll just sink to the bottom. So. Uh, if given the choice, uh, a lot of times it's a lot easier to just use a white pearl uh, rather than the white dye because it'll it'll change the weight of that one color significantly. And you really have to watch what you're doing when you pour it in. Otherwise, it'll just sink to the bottom of whatever mold uh, you're using. So uh, let's see here. 225, 175, 100. All right, so I'm going to use a half teaspoon of blood red caster's choice half teaspoon of sky blue caster's choice and uh let's see here uh, quarter teaspoon of micro pearl from pearl x Okay, so we got all our stuff. I'm gonna get a big cup, measure it all out in one shot to begin with. Let's see here. Try and find a good cup to use. It's clean. Somewhat clean at least. Just gonna kinda, of... there's a few little bits from, from old castings in here. Going to kind of scrape it out. Not a huge deal since we're coloring the resin, but I'd rather not have junk in my cup. Okay, so let's switch to the casting view. All right, so we got our cup. We're going to be mixing again 500 grams total. Um, so that's 250. Oh shoot. Hold on real quick, guys. The other thing, the other problem that happened today is I ran out of gloves. I gotta go steal some from my dad. Jeez. Crazy Fridays. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Oh, he's not got much. He doesn't have many gloves either. What are we gonna do? I could have sworn he had like a ton, a whole box of them, a carton of them. Hold on. Huh. Well. Okay then. Luckily, I have some medium sized gloves. They don't really fit me that well, but they'll do in a pinch. Just in case my wife comes out here. Looks like I need to make a run to Costco. Okay, so we got our gloves. What's going on here? You bought the mini lathe things? 
Is that the one with the commercial where it's like bouncing around on the table? It tried to snow yesterday on Vail. Oh, it's awesome. The maker room was buzzing. Nice. That's cool. Hey, Phil. Looking forward to meeting you, too. Sweet. Yeah, uh, it, I'm going to be doing a couple things. If you're getting into resin casting stuff, also check out the House of Resin booth. Um, I'm going to be doing a stabilizing talk there, but um, Brian Blum's going to be doing casting demos like every hour i think he's gonna be a busy guy uh so definitely check that one out uh that booth house of resin uh, and i think that they're doing other stuff too i think maybe pam harris might be doing some stuff over there um i'm not sure and then we're also doing a, a resin casting q a uh, that's going to be me pam uh jim overton and uh um i just totally went blank and uh jake thompson um, oh, if you guys haven't checked out Jake's video yet, oh my God, the, the Wolverine with the honeycomb. I'm going to put a link in because you have to check this. He did such a good job on the video and the, the blank itself too. What the heck is going on with my computer? Hmm. Okay. Hold on. You have to check this video out. It is awesome. He, uh, he did it. It's kind of a, a collaboration with uh, Al from Al's Hack Shack. So you got you to gotta check it out. They did a, an amazing job on this video. If this video doesn't go, go uh, viral, something's wrong with YouTube. All right, there we go. Did your first resin pour today, Jen? That's cool. How did it turn out? Uh... Okay. So, 500 grams total. We need 250 grams of part A. Um, and on that other pour, that blank, uh, like, like Chad said, I, I saw your comment, it, it is, it's just compounding heat. Um, and so I kind of thought that it may be, I, I don't know, like I said, I'm used to using a Lumalite, and so once it kicks, it starts to cool down. Um, epoxy's not so much. Probably should have waited a little bit longer on that, but... Um, for the most part, the first pour went fine, and it was somewhere in the neighborhood of like, how much was it, 600 grams? So I mean, it, it was probably all right with that one, especially being kind of a wider blank. Uh, I had no problems, but then that second layer, it was, it was actually even more resin. That's where we ran into some problems. <laughs> oh, I went a little over. So just just be uh, be conscious of that if you're using you know most of the epoxies out there most resins for the most you know honestly uh they kind of have a limit on how much you can pour at once you know otherwise it's going to kind of overheat now i don't think there's going to be any major massive problems with the blank should work okay but uh, just just be careful you don't want to overheat it now alumalite clear slow set you can pour gigantic amounts of that um, I actually have not found a, a limit. So just make sure I'm, I'm zeroing that out. We're going to add 250 grams of part B. So it was pretty cool. I went snowboarding yesterday. It was a little bit of a different day, uh, but basically just rode the, the groomers. 
usually I like to go off in the trees and canyons and stuff, but um, the snow was yucky <laughs> everywhere else. Uh, so the groomers were pretty fun, so I was just doing some carving, which I don't really do that much, and I had a pretty fun day up there. All right. We got our 500 grams, so let me get this thing out of the way for now. Get this thing. Right there. Start mixing it up. And then I'm going to have to kind of, oh, I got to go get my, I'm going to go get my pearls. I'm going to break it off into a few different cups here. So we're going to do red, white, and blue. I'm going to go get my blood red and my sky blue. And then I got the micro pearl up here. Hey, how's it going, Ted? Quick video. Well, it's going to be a fairly quick video. We didn't start till. Like 3.30 almost today. Alumalite, that's one nice thing about Alumalite. It, it goes fast compared to that other blank <laughs> that I'm pouring. Oh, man. But I, I decided to go with liquid diamonds on that blank because it was going to be faster than Alumalite clear slow set. I would have had to put that in the, the pressure pot each time. And, you know, it would have been in there for like two two hours maybe three each time which you know by the time you're done you just spent six hours making one blank so with the liquid diamonds i figured oh you know wait about an hour now i'm gonna i'm gonna watch out on the third pour because <laughs> it's probably gonna if i do it right away it's gonna overheat so i'm gonna wait till it kind of cools down a little bit but um that's kind of why i went with that instead but i don't know either way <clears throat> Okay, I got that nice and mixed up. It's probably overly mixed. Let's see here. Just kidding. There's no such thing as overly mixed. 225 is what I'm going to leave in this cup. Uh, we're going to put in 175 in this one. It's going to be the blue. Close enough. I think I'm going to use the temperature gauge on this one. Um, I've been kind of playing around with that a little bit lately. And it looks like, uh, is Chad still here? I always ask you guys, what do you guys uh, pour Alumalite at? What temperature? Because it's seeming like, like 90, 95. It's kind of the way to go. I don't know. Somewhere around in that area. <clears throat> what was the other one? 100 grams. Putting 100 grams in this one. There we go. Okay, so let me go get my pearls. Blood red and sky blue caster's choice. Two of my favorites. Where's the blood red? Never find my colors. Hmm. Why am I always losing my my blood red color? That one's always seems seems to be missing. Must not be in that box. Hmm. It's a mystery. Sky blue. Well. Hmm. All right. Well, let's get our sky blue in here. So I was going to put a half teaspoon of sky blue in. So I got a quarter teaspoon spoon. We'll put two of these guys in there. There we go. Get another stick. Hmm. 
98. Does Pam use Alumilite Clear slow set? Or I guess Alumilite Clear. Anna's here. How's it going? All right, so we got our sky blue. This is going to be our micro pearl. I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of that in there. This is another quarter teaspoon that I got. So that's good. Still don't know where my blood red went. I'm going to have to look for that while we're mixing this up because it's kind of an integral component to my blanks that I want to make today. That's really weird. Oh, I ran out of one. I remember I ran out, but I had it. I think I have another one. Hopefully. Hmm. Paradise blue. Maybe I don't have another one. That would be a tragedy if I didn't have another one. Ah, there it is. I knew I had another one. This is playing hide and go seek. Okay, so we get we're getting our white mixed up. Okay. Give this blue one more a little quick stir. And then let's break open our brand new blood red. Kind of wipe one of these spoons off and then we'll get that in there. Be ready to rock. My clock's at 4:30. I'm. Uh, I think I started that clock a little bit late. That's one. Re that's one good thing that I'm finding. It, it's. It's kind of hard to to exactly start the clock at the same exact time every time. So I, I do kind of agree. We're, we're going with a half teaspoon of the blood red. I do kind of think that you know that temperature is a good way to do it. I'm just not used to it yet. I think that you will have, I think it's a good way to be a little bit more consistent. Now, for the most part, I'm, when I'm just making blanks, you know, for, for my website, I don't really have to, I don't know, I can, I can keep tabs of that, you know, like I, I can do things very consistently just because I do it all the time. And so I've, I've always just used the clock because it's, I can do it pretty consistently, but I don't know. If you can find ways to, you know, reduce the amount of, you know, inconsistencies, you're, you're definitely better off overall. All right, so let's get this blood red mixed in here. Actually, I have GoPro footage. I, and I actually have one video that I actually, I actually made a video of the snowboarding. Um, I'm kind of terrible at doing that. It's, <laughs> I mean, you can just slap a GoPro on your helmet, but it's, I mean, how much of that do you really want to watch? So I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit better at, at doing GoPro footage. And, and frankly, I'm seriously considering starting up a, a like a separate channel that's snowboarding. Um, what I'm finding is like this year I had so many good days, but they're all blending together and you know, aside from being able to share the experience with other people, like it would be really cool to do a vlog style snowboarding channel. So you can kind of go back and be like, what was that day? You know, <laughs> where did we go? Like, I don't know. And just kind of do something like that. The biggest problem though, with vlogging or like videotaping, well, one, you got to hold the thing somehow. Um, and uh, the other problem is like the weather, it just kills the batteries on the GoPros and stuff. And so, I don't know, it, part of me is like, yeah, but you're, you're messing around with the camera half the time while you, you know, I'd rather just be snowboarding, but I'll probably be posting some, some of those videos. I probably am not, I'm not going to post it like public on my, my YouTube channel, but I might put something up like unlisted and if people want to go watch it, or maybe I'll just put them on Instagram or something. So one of these days I will get I will get some videos up for you guys. Anybody that actually wants to see. The first video that I put together actually I'm it's pretty cool. It's not bad. Different views and stuff. 
Um, where's my temperature gauge? I, so I got my, let's get the temperature gauge out. Let's see where we're at here. 89, 88. Like I'm finding, honestly, I'm finding that like 95 is a pretty good number here. Let's see here. Is it not? What's silence is golden? I don't understand. I'm not. I'm not sure what's happening here. <laughs> uh, my mic's working. At least it says so on my thingy. All right. So red, white, and blue. So let let me get this camera like kind of set up for when I actually do the pour somehow here. Um, perhaps if I do this, maybe that'll work better. There's a slightly different view for you guys. Let me see what what does that look like with the yeah that should that should work. You know what I think I'm actually gonna do this time though. I think we're gonna we're gonna wait till it hits like maybe close to a hundred degrees on the resin. Like I want it to be pretty pretty thick. My clock's at nine thirty. Going by time, I would usually start pouring around eleven minutes probably. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait. Um, and I'm going to kind of tilt this over here. And I want to do it like a dirty pour. I'm going to pour the blue and the white into one cup, and then I'm just going to dump one cup. Uh, I find that to be a lot easier than trying to like mess with three different cups. So let's, let's give that a shot. We'll, we'll kind of wait till this stuff thickens up a good amount. I mean, it's still pretty thin. That's another thing is it's a good idea to, to, to know, you know, you can use the temperature, you can use time, but it's also good to just look at the resin and see how thick it is. You know, eventually you kind of get an idea of where it, what consistency it needs to be. And that, that's almost more important. You don't want it to be too thick, but I want it to be pretty thick. I'm going to pour the blue and the white into one cup, and then we're going to dump all of it in, 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 you know, in the tube all at once. And just kind of go that way. It'll be kind of fun. Uh, actually, yeah, I have a few pens on my Etsy shop. Um, they're kind of way old. Um, I, I was I was trying to have somebody list them all, but it's gone kind of slowly. Um, so I have a few things on Etsy which I don't really have too many links to that usually because I, I wasn't using Etsy for a while, but I have pen blanks, turning blanks on my website. Um, and I'm, I'm seriously considering just switching over to my website and having finished pens and stuff there again because <clears throat> I think it'll, I don't know. I don't want to pay Etsy. They don't really do much. All right, we're at 99 on the red. So we're going to dump these guys in to one cup. Okay, and then the blue. All right, and then I'm going to give this just a quick swirl like that and then we're just going to dump her in <clears throat> I find it's a little bit easier to kind of keep colors separated uh, doing you know pouring into a flat mold square 
Um, it's easier to just kind of pour layer by layer that way. I just don't have a lot of experience with tubes. Oh, I think I went a little high on that one, but that's okay. But the problem is there's it's it's dropping so much that that's why I kind of like the the smaller molds a little bit better, like shorter ones, square ones. Because the resin, you can kind of lay it down a little bit easier in a square flat, you know, like the shorter molds. But I haven't really found a, a good way to get around that issue with these tubes yet, necessarily. You can maybe kind of pour it down the side of it a little bit. All right, I'm going to put, I have another one of these shelves. I'm just going to add a little bit more support underneath. Uh, one thing to make sure you do, if you, if you hot glue tubes to, uh, you know, to something else, don't pick it up by the tube after you put the, well, like ever, uh, pick it up by the base and try and get it in there. You might need to kind of, you know, use the tube a little bit to, to guide it into the pot, but don't pick it up by the pot or the, by the tube because it'll, it can pop loose and trust me, I know. Spill the resin all over the place. All right. <clears throat> and into the pot you go. We're going to crank this guy up to 70 PSI. Make sure you don't over pressurize your pressure pot. Make sure you read the, the instructions and stay below the max PSI in it for whatever you use. These ones go up to 80. So I only go to, I take them to 70. And there we have it. We got some red, white, and blue blanks, guys. Let's see here. Let's, where's my mouse? get to the intro cam so there it wasn't a big kind of crazy thing this week uh just some simple ones but we're gonna have those blanks and a lot of other ones let me uh let me zoom in over here i got quite a few blanks um, ready to rock for maker central so it's gonna be i'm not entirely certain um who's doing what with what blanks basically um, I'm just making quite a few, and I'm going to kind of show you guys what, what we got so far that's going over to Maker Central. Um, so we got a whole bunch of them. Some of them are going to be for sale. So I might, I'm thinking I may turn one of these pine cones as one of my demos. Um, and then probably the rest of these will be for sale if anybody wants them. So these are just pine cones and resin. Um, <clears throat> this guy... I'm seriously considering turning that one as one of my demos, the dragon egg with the little opals in there. So we got that one. That one will either be for sale or be turned. We also got this one with the pink and the white pearl and pearl chunks in there. That one turned out pretty cool. So uh, pretty neat. I think I'm going to bring this colored pencil blank that I made a while ago. It's just been kind of sitting there waiting for me to turn it. So I thought maybe I would bring that. Somebody could turn it. I don't know if you guys remember, but when I did that cake pan, uh, the, you know, the spring form cake pan mold test, we did this aluminum shavings blank. This thing's been sitting on my, on my desk for a long time, not sure what to do with it. I think I'm going to bring this guy and uh, maybe have somebody turn it or, or might be for sale kind of thing. Here's a couple of those other uh, red, white, and blue blanks that I made before. So we'll have uh, two of those. Um, two of them are actually going to, uh, to, to, I'm not sure what it, oh, actually I think it's the, uh, might be the Midwest pen turners gathering. And we got these guys kind of dragon egg looking burl chunk guys, a couple of these little blob blanks, some more burl chunks with some orange resin. And I just kind of poured these. These have a bunch of interference powder and some black dye and purple. Kind of interesting. So anyway, the whole point is we got a ton of blanks that are going to be at or around the Easywood Tools booth, basically. And uh, I'm going to be turning some. They're going to have, we're going to have other people, you know, whoever wants to turn them that's doing demos there might turn them. And uh, the other thing is uh, Easy Wood Tools just kind of wanted to have some blanks on hand if people wanted to uh, 
try out the, you know, especially the new negative rate carbides or just their tools. So there's going to be lots of blanks of, you know, up for grabs for, for turning at the booth. Some of those will be for that. Some of them are going to be for actual demos. Uh, but it should be pretty fun. So I hope that uh, if you're anywhere in the area, you can make it out to Maker, Maker Central. Uh, again, May 11th and 12th at the Birming, at the NEC in Birmingham, England. Um, tons and tons of people are going to be there. It's going to be an amazing weekend, so I hope to see you guys out there. Uh, let's stop real quick here. So how long in the pot? Um, it depends on which version of Illumilite. Uh, Illumilite Clear Slow Set, it needs to be two to four hours, depending on the temperature in the shop, how much resin you poured. For the most part, I just leave things in there like that size. I'll probably leave it in for three hours. Um, I usually lean towards leaving it in longer than maybe necessary, but the problem is with the pressure pot, if you pull them out too early, that's a problem. If you, there's no, you, know, if you leave them in longer, it's not gonna hurt anything. It doesn't do anything to them. So I usually leave stuff like that in for about three hours. Um, if you're using the regular set, I mean, really, you could probably pull them in about an hour um you know depending on what size again uh and then you know other resins though you know like if i was doing liquid diamonds and i pressurized it you that's like eight or nine hours in the pressure pot before you can pull it out uh, i own ca technologies pressure pots um, and i have links to where i get them they're they're they make a pot that's it's made for resin casting it's not any different than the, the, their regular pots uh, except they've stripped all the stuff that we would take off anyway. Um, so they're pretty easy to set up. They're really high quality, safe uh, pressure pots. They're a little more expensive, but they're really good. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, I'm using Illumilite. That's what I used for, for those ones. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm just, just reading, let's see here, Micarta type honeycomb. Um, Russell, I, my, the honeycomb that I sell doesn't blow out. Um, it's, I did a bunch of tests to find one that, that adheres the best. So as long as you, uh, you know, let it cure fully and do all the proper stuff, it shouldn't really be that much of a problem. Some aluminum honeycombs work better than others, <laughs> I found. Uh, and so the stuff that I sell on my website is the best that I've found. I haven't, I haven't had any blow blowouts. The, the only thing that can happen is, you know, like in the, the small corners, you know, if you turn it down and there's just a really tiny bit of resin sitting right in that like kind of corner, little chips could come out. Um, but, and that's happened to me a couple times, but the only, all you got to do once you've turned the pen down, I mean, it's, it's like a tiny little chip of resin. Uh, that may come out all you got to do is fill it with ca glue and it's you don't see it but i've never had any like actually come apart or anything that i've made with my, my uh with my honeycomb that i sell so let's see here all right so i think i answered a few of the questions so anyway um i'm going to be you know finishing up that other blank with the peacock feathers so if you guys want to check that out i should have the video ready on sunday on my youtube channel so hopefully let's see yeah, it's kind of cooled down a little bit. Let's actually, let's hit it with the gun and see what, what the temperature is. Yeah, definitely 155 now. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, pour that third layer on it. And uh, so if you wanna see how the blank turned out in the end, um, check that out on Sunday. But until next week, uh, I don't know what we're gonna do next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of starting to, to, to get behind on things because I've been trying to get blanks made and do all this other stuff for, for Maker Central and other things. So don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do something fun. So next Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, we'll do another live stream. Shouldn't be late next week, I don't think. So 3 p.m. should be the right time. So I appreciate all you guys coming out, hanging out with me. I know it was kind of a quick, quick stream today, but we made some red, white, and blue blanks. And uh, like I said, if you guys want to check those out, they're going to be at Maker Central. Um, and actually, a pair of them are going to be at the Easy Wood Tools booth. I think it's the, the Midwest Pen Turners Gathering. So um, same thing either way. If you can't make it to, uh, to Maker Central, maybe you can make it to the Midwest Pen Turners Gathering and uh, stop by the Easy Wood Tools booth and uh, ask Chris to see the red, white, and blue blanks and, and what they're doing with them. So I hope you guys all have a great night. Uh, yeah, get in the shop, make something cool with some resin, hopefully turn it up. Uh, and I will see you guys next Friday at 3 p.m. Again, thanks for coming out. Have a great night, guys.